a brief preview of what I've been working on for the last however long, too long. We'll see. Uh, it's been like four days. So what this is, is uh, I'm trying to build um, a course information system for us so that we can have better decision making uh, throughout the college as far as our online courses. So what does this do? So basically you just got a big old listing of courses. Um, if I look in content, you'll see here's all the courses we have. We're importing these from a data source initially so that we at least get that historical data. Um, we're also doing, in terms of content types, look at these. We've got uh, the ability to do ISBN number lookups, so we have to provide materials to students and communicate to them you know, what they're going to need to take a course. Uh, it's a legal requirement. So this will help by actually bringing in more accurate information based on the ISBN numbers we have. We can also see this with whatever info we want. Um, we have the course, which everything is related off of. We have academic unit that we can then add fields to, and we have you know, programs. So program and academic unit are pretty basic to look at academic unit. We've got you know, who the unit head is, some coordinators, um, a color, because we have color and abbreviation. Those are just the kind of college internals. Um, the program really doesn't have anything. You know, it's just a, an abbreviation if we use one for lists and things. But by making them content types and making them related to a course, uh, as opposed to just tags, they, they're fieldable in a much more flexible way. I, I tend not to use taxonomy as much as possible. Um, this is what our course content type looks like, and it's a little complicated. So we've got it broken up into these major overarching categories. We do things like reference who the instructional designer is of record for it, uh, give it a program classification, academic home, which again will reference those other types, you know, what's the title of the course, uh, some sample material for promotional purposes in the course, um, you know, things for instructors, things for TAs. We're really trying to drive it. This is the place you go for all information related to the course um, from a setup and delivery standpoint. Um, so you'll see we have this little thing here. So this is the first major project I'll go over. Um, thing called field collection. So you might not be familiar with field collection. Um, field collection adds this wonderful wormhole of, uh, of additional fields that you can add. So you can see in my field collections, I have used in course and then another one that's a field collection used in a field collection. So that gets really tricky. Uh, but basically what field collections do is it lets you create a group of values that you're gonna wanna keep you know, providing together over and over and over again. So um, if you imagine you, know, you have your add another type of button, well normally when you have add another, you're adding you know, another title, another uh, reference, another text field basically, just very basic text field or another of whatever that type is. Um, field collections allow you to add another of this entire thing. So when I go and I do add another, I'll get semester, year, ratio, section, and course archive, as opposed to just each of them individually. So that's the main reason for structuring things this way. Um, you can get really sophisticated as you see here. So we have sections, which is actually a field collection inside of offerings. So our data model is kind of course, has offerings, offerings have sections, right? So we'll go back to field collections and look at a section, see what that looks like. So see we have campus, number of seats, um, a lot of stuff related to kind of the, the internal nuts and bolts of running the learning institute uh, when you get down to it. Um, you know, how long people have access for, what's the address, um, and then some historical information that will help us plan better going forward, such as you know, how many students actually took the course, uh, what was the breakdown in terms of where it was deployed, things like that. Um, so we can actually look at one of these looks like we go into courses and we'll see this nice list here. Uh, we can go to our 10 and editing our 10, we'll see what that looks like. So we've got your details. Land, design instruction designers, uh, give a description. This is mostly for front end communication. Samples, you know, so we can again communicate here's what a sample syllabus and lesson look like. Uh, just some references to you know, university building, things like that. This is still work in progress. Uh, resources, so that we can attach files and things. You know, we always make a design document for a course, delivery guide, setup guide, uh, things that would be relevant to new instructors teaching the course. Uh, that way the course can, you know, the information about a course can be transferable beyond just the initial person that made it with us. 
uh, teaching assistants, again, same type of idea, add documents that are relevant to them, and then you get into offerings. So the, this is, and this is an import of historical data, uh, all the times that our tent has been offered. And so this is only going back to 08, we're actually gonna send this back all the way. Um, but we'll see that we have you know, semester in spring, the year, um, sections. Right now you just put a ratio, so you don't drill down all the way, that would be way too much data to load on one page. Um, archive, which, you know, again, for historical purposes, what was the course at that time, which will, the system's really going to drive what happens with our course production upstream. So we actually use this system to then create spaces and elves um, so that we have data related to the offering of that course. Uh, so you'll see the resources tab, which this tab will then break down instructors and TAs. You'll only have permission to see these based on if you should be the person viewing them. So doing some cool stuff there with um, some different permission from audience. Um, offering, so we have add an offering. So I can add one through here directly. You'll see I get a bridged form, which is just the offering itself. Um, I can filter this list by year and semester, which is kind of cool. And then sections. So you'll see this is the breakdown of sections. So these are the sections that were offered during fall 2009-2010 in this case. Right? So you see at University Park, University Park, um, two different years. And that way you can add any, a section to this year, you know, year semester combination. So this in any of these campuses, mm -hmm. um, determine who the instructor of record is, assign TAs, um, communicate the syllabus, as well as mark what the legally required materials are so that we can get that process going, have it all in one place. Um, historical, you know, again, there's a breakdown, I'm sure there's things in the form. So, what this then ends up giving us is a lot of data points. And so, this really is when we get down to a big data system. So the hope is that you can make better decisions based on visualizations of that data. So you'll see here, um, this is our tens enrollments per year. Um, and again, we, we don't have 100% filled right now and waiting for those numbers. So you know, you'll be able to get the data table as to what this is. I can dump this out to a CSV by clicking that button. I can then go and just interact with and look at what this is, but I can also modify it. So I just want to see our 10 as it's run at University Park. And so here are those numbers from University Park. Here are these numbers at the bottom, and it actually is dynamically updated the CSV file so that it's just going to return the things of the University Park. Um, I can say, uh, what's UP in the fall look like for us? And break that out per year. And you know what? Uh, I actually want to see things by semester, right? So fall versus spring. I can then slice that and say, let's just see University Park fall versus spring, right? Uh, I can go to campus and see, we have you know, just these two campuses with the data set we have currently. Uh, but again, I can then slice based on, let's say, spring, 08, 09. That's what the data looked like for spring right now. So, pretty cool, right? Uh, we can go back into offerings. We'll see, the important thing about R10 is, R10 is not in a vacuum. R10 is actually part of the School of Visual Arts. Wouldn't it be great to aggregate that data across the School of Visual Arts? You know, so we go into courses and see these are all of the offerings again slicing the information a little higher level um, so that it's for all the courses so you'll see all the courses across the bottom again we get the same data sheet which is a mile long now 127 records um, csv file associated to it and then we can slice at this level so we could say mm -hmm. just show me the courses for 2010 2011 and as we'll see here we now cut into the data that way. We've got 39 results. See this per course. Um, we can uh, drill down into program classification too. So if I just wanted to see the general arts courses going on there, here's just the courses that ran Gen Ed for 2010-2012 or 2011. Uh, pretty cool. So I can cut into program. If we want to look program centric, we can see you know, the Google Arts Certificate, Gen Ed, Master of Professional Studies. Um, we can do, well, what does look like at University Park? And again, you see there's this empty column here, right? So this is courses that aren't in any of these right now. So I had to classify them. Um, again, we can go by year, go by semester. 
not long. Oh, it's it's mad because you know, got multiple years to find it. <laughs> so you see, I can cut the data that way, but I can also go at the highest level, right? So we have college data, and so this is what our breakdown looks like at the highest level. Um, you know, what are the courses by academic unit? And then we can see, oh, hey, here's what the course numbers are. We have 50 courses. Here's what the breakdown is. And then we can even slice this chart, too. So let's say, what were the courses that we ran 2010, 2011? Well, there they are. This is a percentage breakdown. There at the bottom, we ran 35 courses as a college that year. Um, this is all data you can get elsewhere at the university, but we're really trying to use this data set to then drive decision making forward. Um, and then provide incentive through visualization. So, uh, for example, here are the enrollments per course in every course in the college. Um, and this is just a slicing of the data set, but the fact that it's in here, I can then use views to look at this data much more dynamically than I could by having to do all kinds of slices in Excel, for example. Um, we can look at it in different forms. So, instead of bars, maybe we've got this type of when we're looking at it, we can do, again, semester. So if there's our enrollments, clearly we do a lot more uh, enrollments in the spring as opposed to the fall. Uh, but then we could also say, well, how many of those were in the or University Park? We could slice it even further and say just visual arts at University Park, just digital arts certificate at University Park. So you can get really fine-grained information to see that, wow, we really aren't offering a lot of this course, historically, of course. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that potentially. So if we get into campus, we do that. Uh, academic unit. Here are all the enrollments historically uh, per academic unit we have. And it's summing them right there. So you see a lot of courses in there. Again, then we can slice that down and look at it. So let's just look at this year. And let's just look at spring and we look at world campus. Just going to make some graph data. There we go. So you can start to see who's got what influence at what point in time in terms of the college's overall portfolio. Um, and then below, it's actually going to break these numbers down further. So we can see per area, which is what this is grouped by, what makes up those numbers. So in this case, we have our history with 49, right? So 49 seats were taken. Again, I don't have the offering filled out with accurate data, but you see it totals up the number of courses. So we could easily look at this chart and see School of Visual Arts had eight courses that year and had 116 seats taken. Again, we can always dump things out to CSV. Um, we can look at the program level if we want to split things that way. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, something else you can do with this is that it's actually responsive charts as well. So let's say that you were on a mobile phone, and I'll have to get refreshed to simulate this. But if you're on a mobile phone accessing this data, we still want to be able to serve it to you accurately. So this is the mobile version of the website, right? So we have a responsive theme and then responsive tables and responsive charts in it. So you almost have created a uh, an in the palm of your hand application for viewing all the data at the college. And again, you can still go and slice this down and it'll give you those charts in real time because it's live data. Um, pretty cool stuff. So let me go back up to uh, maybe like tablet mode. And again, let's go to tablet mode. Um, some other projects that have been used in the creation of this. Uh, I've got views bulk operations going on. We do some cool stuff there. Um, there are some really cool permissions modules in place. So we go into content types, we do academic units. Um, I have a unit head here, right? Um, there's this node access user reference module, which I just found for doing this project. But basically, it says whoever is referenced here has the ability to do something, right? So in this case, the person referenced in this field will be able to update the node, um, and then you can give it different <clears throat> additional roles, things like that, right? But another really cool aspect in this is um, so you can not only grant them the ability to update this, you can then go and say, well, things that reference this, they also have those permissions on. So in this case, there's academic home, right? So academic home, um, if we edit academic home, you'll see grants from reference nodes. So pass on view access. If someone has the ability to view the thing this is referencing, then they can view this. 
that's less of a concern than the following, which is if the user has the ability to update this, the thing that's referenced, they can update this one. And so what we can do is we can basically cascade access to an entire portfolio of courses based on if someone has the ability to edit one of them. Um, so let's show what that would look like. So if I went into School of Visual Arts, you see we have I have School of Visual Arts. So if I put in his name, because he's referenced here as Unihead, he has the ability to edit this now, which is pretty cool. Um, we can go to Courses then, and just to showcase that that's true, I go to Arch Architecture 100, I don't have the ability to edit that. And if I go to the program, I don't have the ability to edit that, or sorry, the unit. Um, but if I go to Art002, that's within the School of Visual Arts, and as a result, he can edit it. So that's basically what that permission breakdown does. So I'm still working on this quite heavily, um, trying to get it out the door at some point here. You know, it's a long video. Uh, but this will actually be released as a, uh, a distribution just to get the framework out there uh, so people can, can check it out. It's a pretty cool build and it actually doesn't have um, much custom code because everything I've had to write for it has been adopted into the projects uh, that it needed. So this is almost entirely in, uh, in contrib already. It's just assembling it together uh, with some features.